Hello guys, it is Gate of Theories here and today we are back talking about my mum Tracy Beaker. Now this show has been out for a month and whether you love it or absolutely hate it, you can't deny that it has brought back lots and lots of memories and nostalgia for the original Tracy Beaker books, story of Tracy Beaker TV show, Tracy Beaker Returns and The Dumping Ground. And because of this, the show went out of its way to hide little hidden references to these past shows and any possibilities that may happen in the future. In the media these references are basically called easter eggs which is a term used to describe a message or feature hidden in a video game film tv show or other usually electronic medium and my mum tracy b game is absolutely full of these little hidden easter eggs that reference the past the present and the future of tracy beaker so i thought today it would be really fun if we try and find all of these little hidden easter eggs that seem to be dotted around this whole movie but before we go any further please make sure that you've clicked that red subscribe button down below and have your notifications turned on so that you get notified every time I make a brand new Tracy Beaker video and guys we have recently set up a brand new Patreon page so if you want to go and check that out and support us even more there'll be a link down below in the description. <laughs> So we're going to look at these easter eggs by basically going through chronologically through the film and for the most of them I'm going to say the exact timing so you guys can go and check the film out on iPlayer and view it yourselves. And right from the bat we get our first easter egg referencing the great Tracy Beaker Returns. At 1 minute 10 Jess is narrating Tracy's different jobs and she says she was a care worker. This is of course a huge reference to the whole of Tracy Beaker Returns where the whole premise of the show is Tracy being a care worker. Then at 2 minutes 40 we get our next easter eggs through some pictures on the wall of the cafe that Tracy is working on. They show beaches and palm trees and basically just paradise. This could very easily be a reference to Hollywood and Tracy's childhood dream of going to paradise with her Hollywood star mum and they're basically here to show that that actually never happened for Tracy. Not to mention having Hollywood pictures in a cafe might also be a reference to the diner in the original story of Tracy Beaker movie of me where Tracy goes to find her mum. For the next few minutes the movie looks at Tracy and Jess's flat and there is several easter eggs hidden around this flat that appear throughout the movie so we might as well get them all out of the way now. While the camera is showing the flat from 3 minutes onwards Tracy is currently reading Jess a story from her autobiography. Tracy is reading the story of the dare game which is a reference to the very famous episode in the story of Tracy Beaker where Justine dares Tracy to eat a worm and because it's Tracy Beaker she does it. I'm sure we've all seen it. Now this story has been read out from this book many many times before such as in Tracy Beaker Returns in series 1 episode 4 called Up a Tree where Tracy reads this dare story to T, Lily and Carmen and it basically just shows T that she can do anything and then she falls from the tree. I'm sure we've all seen the episode. It then is later brought up again when Justine returns in series 3 of Tracy Beaker Returns and she tries to disprove Tracy's writing so she makes Tracy eat another worm to prove it. Similarly, later on when Jess is reading the book at school and she gets into a fight with Tyrone, Tyrone reads the pages and it talks about how Justine was the meanest kid in the dumping ground, which is a reference to basically all of the story of Tracy Beaker. And Tracy ends the story with the line, Bog off, which of course is Tracy's iconic catchphrase. Throughout the flat, there's lots of other Easter eggs, such as on the shelves. At 3 minutes 05, you can see many Jacqueline Wilson books who wrote Tracy Beaker, and these are books such as The Dare Game, which is a Tracy Beaker story about the one that we've just been talking about, where Justine dares Tracy to eat a worm, Girls in Love, and many other different books. Then at 3 minutes 09 there's more books seen such as the book Who Cares Tracy Beaker which is the book Tracy is reading to Jess at this moment in time and it's the exact same book that she wrote in Tracy Beaker Returns about her life which is of course a massive easter egg as the whole first series of Tracy Beaker Returns is basically just about how Tracy wrote this book about herself. However, in this show it has a different cover, more like the original Tracy Beaker books by Jacqueline Wilson, rather than just a picture of Cam and Tracy, which it is in Tracy Beaker Returns. And as a fun fact, the last time the autobiography was seen on screen before this was in the attic in the dumping ground when Kazima and Tyler find it while searching for stolen wallets in the dumping ground series 3 episode 2. On the same shelf there is also the book The Force of the Shadow, which is actually a foreshadowing reference to later on in the film when Miss Oliver first meets Cam and discusses how she reads the book The Force of the Shadow. And underneath that there is the book Camilla Lawson, which is of course Cam's autobiography. 
As well as this, in the flat there is also a Hollywood picture above the TV showing two characters lying down in paradise, which is again another reference to Tracy's childhood dream of going to Hollywood. At 3 minutes 17 into the film, you can also see photo strips with Tracy and Jess on, and this could easily be a reference to Tracy Beaker Returns, where photo strips were used quite a lot, especially with the iconic ones of Frank and Liam from A Day in the Beach, which later return at the end of the show in the scrapbook that the kids give Tracy as a leaving present. And the next one is probably one of the best easter eggs in this whole movie. In the kitchen of the flat you can actually see a picture of the original cast of the story of Tracy Beaker hidden on the wall. It's small and can easily be missed but it's a treat when you finally see it. Moving away from Tracy's flat now, there's Jess's school, and I actually didn't notice this at first, but when I did, I honestly think it's the best easter egg out of all of them. Jess's school is actually called Duke Primary School, and that is a reference clearly to Duke, the famous cook that we all know and love, who cooked for Tracy when she was in care. I honestly absolutely love this reference, and I really hope it was intentional. And on the logo of the school, there is also a picture of an elm tree, which relates to the two care homes from the story of Tracy Beaker and Tracy Beaker Returns, Elm Tree House 1 and 2. At 10 minutes 14, we first meet Sean Godfrey, and we find out that Tracy used to call him football, and that's all she ever knew him as. I just thought this was a fun idea. However, it might actually be a secret reference to the Tracy Beaker DS game, which I did not know existed, and now I just really want it. One of our commenters on one of our previous videos, Glanville underscore 32, pointed out that in this game, Tracy meets a character called Football, so maybe this is the original Sean Godfrey it's talking about. Then, at the end of the first episode, there is the iconic pink Cadillac car, and Tracy says to Jess what the reference actually is. It's, of course, the car she always dreamed her mum driving in Hollywood, and I just think that is amazing that finally it has returned. And the last time it was actually in the show was in the Tracy Beaker movie of me, where Tracy finally gets to ride it. Then, in episode two, we get Justine returning, who last appeared in Tracy Beaker Returns series three, episode seven. Now, when Justine returns, the film shows us several videos and images of Justine from the story of Tracy Beaker, including this first shot of Justine and Tracy from series 4 at 39 minutes 21 seconds. Then at 39 minutes 23, it shows animations from series 3. Then at 39 24, it shows the iconic scene again from the Dare game where Justine makes Tracy a worm, and an animation from that episode appears next. After this, Jess even says, So you didn't steal her best friend and make her eat worms. And this is again another reference to that Dare game episode, and the very first episode of the story of Tracy Beaker where Tracy returns and finds out Louise was stolen from her by Justine. And then this next part just gives me so much nostalgia. The pair of them begin listing loads of iconic characters from the original story of Tracy Beaker, including Louise, Mike Hukin, just here underneath Jess's narration, and if you listen carefully, you can actually faintly hear Tracy mention Mike's wedding, which is a direct reference to the Dumping Ground Series 6, where Tracy returns to be Mike's best man for his wedding, as well as Jenny, Adele, and Weedy Peter, who was never actually called Weedy Peter in the original show, but was in the book. And when Justine returns later after being cheated on, there is actually two references to the exact same episode, which is Justine Littlewood returns in series 3 of Tracy Beaker Returns. The first reference is the fact that Justine was cheated on by Sean here, and that in this episode she was cheated on by her ex-boyfriend, Charlie. And when Tracy and Justine have a physical fight, the last time this also happened was that exact same episode. Next, we have Carly returning, who was of course last seen way back in the first ever Tracy Beaker movie, The Movie of Me. And while Tracy and the others are waiting for Carly to appear, Tracy cleverly is staring out of the window, which is of course a huge reference to all of the times in the story of Tracy Beaker, where Tracy would sit by the window waiting for her mum to appear, but she never did. And Cam even mentions this whole window idea has now happened yet again here to Carly when she finally appears. And it was last brought up in the franchise back in Tracy Beaker Returns in the final episode where Mike finds Tracy staring out the window before he finally says goodbye goodbye to her for good. Then at 47 minutes and 6 seconds, we can see on Jess's table she is reading Little Woman, which explains why Jess loves lots of old and antique items such as the painting. I don't see how Little Woman really has anything to do with Tracy Beaker apart from female empowerment, but it's classed as an easter egg. 
Then at 48 minutes 17 seconds, when Jess and Sean drive to Tyrone's flat when he doesn't show up to football, you can actually see a white sheet hanging from the balcony which says in big letters, Jackie 30. Now originally I thought maybe this could be a reference to the character Jackie, but it's actually a very clear reference to Jacqueline Wilson herself who wrote the original Tracy Beaker books exactly 30 years ago, as this show is all about celebrating Tracy Beaker's 30th anniversary, so that was a nice little hint to that. Then at 51 minutes we see Tracy straightening her hair which is just a reference to the fact that Tracy has straight hair in Tracy Beaker Returns compared to the iconic curly hair in the story of Tracy Beaker. In this exact same scene Jess also has many stuffed toys with one being a giraffe which could be a direct reference to Jeff the giraffe from Tracy Beaker Returns and the dumping ground who was Harry's toy giraffe and actually ended up outliving Harry as a character and was then passed on to Floss and then Floss ended up getting another one. Now, this next one isn't really an easter egg, but I just thought I found it funny, so I'm just going to add it in. If you go to exactly 54 minutes and 22 seconds, you can actually see Rosalie pretending to cut carrots, and I just thought this was a funny thing to mention. And after this, Tracy finds out Sean has actually been cheating on her, and she gets very, very angry. This may be a reference to Jess's dad or Seth, her ex-boyfriend from Tracy Speaker Returns, and if you want to find out more about what might have happened between Tracy and Seth, we've linked a video down below in the description, or you can go and click the card up there and it'll take you to a theory about it. Then at 1 hour 7 minutes and 15 seconds when Tracy is lying on her sofa depressed, it actually plays the original theme of the story of Tracy Beaker, Someday by Kiesha White, but the sad version where it basically is just a piano version of the main theme. It honestly gives me so much nostalgia and it appears throughout the story of Tracy Beaker when Tracy was either left alone and sad and in the movie of me when she leaves Cam and can't find Carly and is basically just lost in the dark, which this is all all just brought back so much emotion for me. Then at 1 hour 19 minutes and 20 seconds during Tracy's cardboard den you can actually see a cup which says I am a beaker which is of course one of Tracy's well known sayings. Next we have Cam's wedding and as a fun fact Cam was always originally planned to be gay by Jacqueline Wilson but for legal reasons wasn't because of the time the book actually came out. During the wedding you can see a drag queen which may just be in support of LGBTQ plus community or it could actually be a reference to Danny Harmer herself who watches and supports Drag Race UK as she tweets about it a lot so she's clearly a very big fan. During the wedding, Peter of course returns but is actually being played by a different actor. In the film they've changed it slightly and have made Peter some sort of head teacher and that's how he knows Mary Oliver and that's why he's actually at the wedding. But in the book, Peter actually returns to celebrate his and Tracy's birthday together which relates back to when they shared a birthday on the show way back in series 1. And then at 1 hour 24 minutes and 5 seconds, the main theme of the story of Tracy Beaker someday plays at the wedding and Tracy even says this is our song then goes and dances to it referencing not only the original TV show but the last Tracy Beaker movie the movie of me where it ends with the characters dancing to the song live and if it didn't just make you smile with nostalgia I don't know what will and then finally we of course have the dumping ground antique store which to be honest it could just be a reference to pretty much anything in this franchise it could be Tracy Beaker in the dumping ground and all of her care homes the story of Tracy Beaker TV show Tracy working at the dumping ground in Tracy Beaker Returns, the Dumping Ground TV show, a reference to the next book where Tracy actually works in this antique store which is called We Are The Beaker Girls, Jacqueline Wilson's characters who have all lived in care or are about disadvantaged kids, so basically any of the books that she's actually created, or just a giant mixture of them all which is what I believe it is. Tracy says we'll check it out later, referencing she officially has left the DG now, but hinting that she'll come back at, to the shop later, which is of course what happens in the second book, and will probably happen in season 2. Then finally, at 1 hour 26 minutes and 49 seconds, Jess says the story of Tracy Beaker and Sean Godfrey didn't get its happy ending, but the story of the Beaker Girls was just beginning, referencing the second book, We Are the Beaker Girls, and this to be continued also suggests that this season or movie or whatever you want to call it will get a second one and it will focus on this second book. And of course, the movie ends with an awesome remix of the original theme song, Someday, by Kiesha White, which honestly just brought back so much nostalgia and I absolutely love this remix. 
So there we go, that is so many easter eggs and hidden references to all of the Tracy Beaker franchise and beyond that this movie managed to fit in. But I bet there's loads that I missed that you guys might have caught so if you have found any others make sure that you put them down in the comments and also let us know what your favourite easter egg was because I still think mine is Duke Primary School just because you can never beat Duke. But anyway guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, make sure that you smash that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And guys, make sure that you check out our Patreon. Link in the description down below. It's brand new. And as always, we've been here at Gate of Theories. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.